N and A Productions is an infamous YouTube channel now with over two million subscribers, run by an 18-year-old Iranian boy named Amir. Now, Amir's YouTube channel has received endless criticism over the years by some of YouTube's premier commentators for being one of the worst channels on YouTube. And honestly, the criticism is pretty much all valid. I mean, you would be hard pressed to find more insufferable content on YouTube that is getting at least a noteworthy amount of monthly views. Who was that? What was that sound then? This is scary, guys. Oh my God. To describe his content, I'd like to briefly hark back to a video made by my friend Critical in July of 2018. His channel's name is n a Productions and it's so generic it makes Nickelback look like rock and roll pioneers. His channel is a scientific anomaly that challenges our very understanding of the basic particles of the universe. Now it's been about a year since Amir was put through the commentary community ringer, if I may call it that, in which millions of people were exposed through the lens of their favorite commentator to just how deplorable his content was. Now the fallout from this exposure on Amir's end was quite substantial with his like to dislike ratio getting demolished and his comment section being overtaken by negative comments. But ultimately exposure, whether good or bad, can be a benefit to those on the receiving end as long as they are able to withstand the emotional implications of dealing with a sudden influx of criticism and negative feedback and just ride that wave. This is, after all, the persistent catch-22 of the commentary community as we often shine a huge spotlight on the creators and influencers many of us believe don't deserve any light at all. But if we're being honest, signal boosting shitty content is the least of our worries when there is potential to make an entertaining video for our audience and snag a few bags of ad revenue on the back end. So fast forward now, a year later, and Amir from NNA Productions is still holding strong. Coming off of the commentary community pummeling, he continued pumping out the most formulaic hot clickbait trash multiple times a week and still makes more money annually than a majority of college graduates their first 10 years out of school. Now I get comments all the time to do a video on NNA Production, and as you can tell, I finally am, but in an attempt to not just regurgitate all of the same this dude sucks lol commentary made by my YouTube contemporaries over the last couple of years, I want to look at this through a different lens. A lens that casts aside the objectively horrific quality of content and instead views his <clears throat> achievements <coughs> through an entrepreneurial lens void of any YouTube biases. But first... I have to at least peek to see what he's been up to. I mean, just to see if he's made any strides in the right direction or if he had some sort of content intervention and it's allowed him to make something even remotely palatable. So let's just take a glance at his most recent. Guys, if I spin this fidget spinner, <laughs> if I spin this fidget spinner on my hand for five seconds, you guys have to smash a like button. Deal, yeah, guys? Let's do this. Three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, Boom, now you guys have to smash the like button. Boom, now you guys have to smash the like button. Yeah, so the fidget spinner smash the like button stick still going strong in 2019. You love to see it. Wanna join my free gift cards giveaway? Subscribe to my channel, like the video, and turn I mean, could you even compete for the prestigious title of YouTube's worst creator if you don't have a fake free gift card giveaway at the beginning of your videos? I mean, my man has covered all of his bases. Hey, let's go. Welcome back to another brand new video. Another day, another banger. Because at last video, we have a really special video, right, guys? So another day, another banger is another one of his catchphrases, and I actually took the time to look it up on Google Translate, and what it really means is, hello, guys, welcome to another video. Uh, this will be another opportunity that might compel you to bang your head into the pointed sharp end of a letter opener. Right guys, and it's kind of sad and scary, alright guys? So guys, I know all of you guys know who's I'm Gestation, alright guys? I'm Gestation is a YouTuber who does 3am videos just like me, alright guys? Like me and I'm Gestation, we do 3am videos, alright guys? And recently, I'm Gestation got attacked in his house, alright guys? And it is really, really sad. Like, it's really bad, alright guys? The hate did this to him like I'm just gonna say guys now this one has always perplexed me but another very consistent characteristic of F tier youtubers is their habitual egregious abuse
abuse of the word guys. In fact, you guys remember Eli Socre? Guys, y'all will not believe what I just found, guys. I was walking through the park on my early morning jog, guys, and I came across something crazy, guys, right in the middle of a park, guys. You guys are not gonna believe what I found. If you guys wanna see what I found right now, smash the like button, guys. Smash the like button right now, because my discovery is insane, guys. You will not believe this, I cannot believe myself. Everybody smash the like button right now to see what I just found, guys. Why, gentlemen, must you abuse the word with such malice? What did the word guys ever do to you? Give it a goddamn break and let the word breathe for just more than a sentence. Please, I beg of you. I'm just gonna do a little edit, though, and just get through the next few minutes of this video, but I'm just gonna leave in the word guys for you. Guys, 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 guys. Guys, 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 yeah, so that goes on for like five minutes. Absolutely unbearable. You guys see what happened to MJ Station? Oh my god, I really hope he gets better. He then spends the next several minutes reacting to what was a sound effect that he clearly added in post. Um, didn't even bother to fade the sound effect out. Like, it just ends so abruptly, it's clear that it's like a WAV file. But, well, I mean, honestly, we're way beyond fading WAV files. Who am I kidding? Who was that? What was that sound then? This is scary, guys. Oh my god. Oh my god, let me just close the door. Oh no! 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 Oh, no! And then the rest of the 10 minute and 4 second video is just him getting beat up by what is clearly his sister uh, in a robe and an anonymous mask. <laughs> Who are you? Woo! Encore! Encore! So clearly not a single thing has changed, which I guess we could have anticipated, but I think one of the benefits of setting the precedent of having the worst content on YouTube is that you literally have no chance of disappointing anyone when the bar is already set so low. It gives you complete creative freedom to do whatever you want. For example, Amir has done some music videos over the years, which I personally find delightful, okay? But I'm, I'm a little bit biased. But the layperson might write, record, and film a song like this. I'm a savage, 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 I'm a savage. And think to themselves after watching it back, uh, yeah, you know what? This is so bad. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sleep on this one. Maybe I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't release this. But in Amir's case, doesn't matter. Who are you letting down? In fact, I'd go as far as to say the expectation of quality is so low that these music videos might be a step up from his normal 3 a.m. videos. Sweet creative freedom, baby. Just think about it. Zero expectations, zero pressure, zero chance of letting anyone down. I just can't think of a better gig. That got 275,000 views, by the way, that song. Oh, and did I mention that he makes over six figures annually? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he does. If we're being honest, I'm kind of jealous of his content model. Now, here's where I want to make a massive mindset shift. Imagine for just a second that you weren't an avid YouTube consumer, but that you were just a passerby simply listening to a story about a young Iranian, Iranian boy who was, who was given, given nothing, nothing, but through his tenacity and unrelenting will was able to find an audience of millions of adoring fans and pull his sister and mother out of poverty and into a life that they had only ever dreamed of. A boy whose father left before he was old enough to walk and whose single mother had worked two back-breaking jobs her whole life just to keep her kids from starving to death as she tried to do right by her children. This unsuspecting boy who, inspired deeply by Logan Paul, did just what a maverick would do and grinded out YouTube videos using only his uncle's cell phone when he couldn't afford his own and who would spend three hours in a Starbucks just to upload a single video because his family was too poor to afford Wi-Fi. A boy that after one year of uploading had only managed to amass 100 subscribers, but for him, failure was not an option, so he persisted, impervious to all the signs urging him to give up. Then, just when hope was all but lost, his first viral 3 a.m. video. The views started climbing, the subs started rolling in, and dollar signs replaced the sockets where his eyeballs once lived as his ad revenue reached a number that he had never thought possible. A number that would eventually see him help his mother afford a house, a laptop, and even his very own Wi-Fi to upload with. A number that would continue to grow and afford him the freedom to get the iconic Savage Maverick tattoo on his forearm to pay homage to the one man who inspired his meteoric rise, the man that all insufferable content inevitably traces back to, 
Logan Paul. Well, at least that's what his Draw My Life video that he uploaded somewhat recently would lead you to believe. I went ahead and watched it for you and summarized it with a bit of a dramatic delivery so you didn't have to sit through it. Uh, but given his history of content and outright lies, there's probably a 90 to 95 percent chance most of it's bullshit. That tattoo is real, by the way, so, you know. But you can see the perspective that I'm trying to offer here, right? Like, would I force my worst enemy to watch his content? Of course not, okay? That would be absolutely inhumane. But content quality aside, this is an 18-year-old Iranian boy elevating his family through sheer persistence of will. An entrepreneurial... An entrepreneurial... An entrepreneur... An entrepreneurial... Entrepreneurial. Entrepreneurial. An entrepreneurial magnate, I guess. I... I don't know, really, what, somebody give me a hand here, throw me a bone, what is, <laughs> there has to be some sort of justification for the views, how is he getting the, how is he getting these, hey, he's doing, he's doing right by his family, I guess, I don't know, I don't know what else, <laughs> so in summary, I don't really know what I'm talking about. All I know is that his content is like a plague and it makes me want to swan dive headfirst into a wood chipper. So, <laughs> thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>